Um, you know, some of these people who are saying this in the NHS, you know, if you offered them a bonus system where you say to them, I will pay you a tenner for eight, for every £100 you save, there would be a, you'd see a big change in the NHS because at the moment they are wasting hundreds of millions of pounds every single year. But we're all concerned about the NHS, of course we are. But I'm concerned about us keep throwing money at it when it's obviously a broken system. We need to completely overhaul the NHS and bring it into the, the 21st century, which we're not. We keep, you know, throwing money at it is the easy option when it's the whole structure of the NHS that has a big, big problem. I see it. I, I mean, uh, my wife uses the NHS almost weekly and I see the waste. You know, we see the articles every single week on, on recruiting diversity officers and woke alphabets and stuff. It's time it was run like a business. Um, to give the the public a much better service and value for money, but hey, I think there's too many, far too many politicians in the place that we work at that scared to have that conversation. Lee, uh, I was I was reading last night. Jeremy Hunt said in October 2016, this is a quote when he was Secretary of State for Health. Training a doctor costs over £200,000, so in return we will ask all new doctors to work for the NHS for four years, just as army recruits are asked to after their training. And I thought, I, 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 don't, I can't recall this ever being brought in where the, when a doctor's been trained up. This was, he, said this, he said this six years ago, it was going to happen. Is it not? I mean, I, I agree with what Jeremy Hunt said back there. Do you, that we, if, if people are trained up, the taxpayers paid a lot of money for their training, surely we should yeah. keep them in the NHS? Would you, would you, say, would you agree with that? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sort of... I flipped up on this a little bit, Phil. It's not a very a conservative thing to do to force somebody to stay in the country. But that said, I think there is a moral obligation here. If you're going to be born in this country and go through the system, go through nursery, go through school, go through the sixth form, go through college, you know, live in a society where everything's safe, you know, you've got a good police force, you've got a good healthcare system. If you've done all that and, you know, 27 years after being born, you become a GP or, or whatever, then I think there's a little bit of a moral obligation here to you, you know what, I owe my country a little bit. I'm going to give them something back. I think it was, was it Kennedy that says, you know, think what you can do for your country, not what your country can do for you. I mean, that's how I live my life, and, and I'm sure that's the same with you too. So you can't force people to do this, but uh, I would hope that they would have a, would have a conscience and, and, and give back towards our society. It's a little bit different, I think, for, for nurses and, and people like that. They're not earning the same as, as GPs. They're earning a lot less. And I think probably we should be a little bit kinder to some of our NHS staff, our nurses, our paramedics, and especially with the um, the student loans that they get. I think if they do a five- or a ten-year stint in the NHS, we should give them that money back. Well, could you not force them to do this? I mean, this is what Jeremy Hunt was talking about. And if if, you, if the taxpayer's coughing up, you know, to around £200,000, I did see full fact said that uh, 165000 was grants and 65,000 was in loans, but say it's 165,000 pounds. Surely you could say to a doctor, look, you've got to work for, Jeremy Hunt said, four years. If you want to go off yeah. and work in Amer America or Australia yeah. or New Zealand or whatever, then no. if you want to pay back your training costs that we've paid for you, then fair enough, you can be release yourself from it. But surely there's, we, we could force them to do this, couldn't we? We, yeah, we could. We, we, we could. Um, I'd, I'd like to think, though, Phil, that's that people would have enough decency within, enough soul-searching, to actually think, you know what, this is a great country. We actually owe our country a debt, and, and for the doctors that came before us. But, look, the we can't keep the fits on this, Phil, because it, we're quite, that, happy, to, we're though, quite happy to brain-drain other countries. Yeah. I think that... So, yeah, so we, we're quite happy... I got that. We're quite yeah, happy to break. Yeah. You're quite right. We are taking them from elsewhere. But with, like, nearly 7,000 doctors applying for a certificate to work abroad last year, with once they did a survey, one in three saying they want to go abroad, yet we need an extra 9,000. Isn't it just a simple way to say, you've had a quarter of a million, worth the training, stay in the UK for at least five years? Yeah, no, it would be really simple, and I, and I would love that to happen. But like I said before, as, you know, we're brain-draining other countries. We're quite happy to take really well-qualified people from countries that probably need doctors more than we do, yet we've been a little bit hypocritical. So maybe in agreement with other countries, you know, the, you can't have one of our doctors for five years and vice versa. Maybe that would be a way around it. But uh, we can't be hypocrites on this. Lee, just uh, just finally, uh, the the, pe the am ambulance uh, drivers have said have written an open letter saying that they feel utterly betrayed by the government in the way that they've been treated and demonised. What 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 do you make about uh, about that and how ambulance workers have been 
treated by the government. Do you do you share that, or do you think that what they're saying is 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 inaccurate? Well, there's a distinction here, Phil, and you know, it's between ambulance drivers and ambulance unions. You know, I've spent times uh, a shift with with ambulance drivers, and they, you know, sometimes they tell me a little a different story to what the unions are telling them. But there there is big problems in the ambulance service. We had one particular case where one man had rung the ambulance service 200 times in a month and they had to go out to him because he says the right things on the phone. And, and the ambulance staff, you know, they say to me, we shouldn't be going out to these people, but they have to. They're instructed to by their bosses. So it's like, the, you know, it's part of the NHS and then there are structural problems within the, the ambulance service. It's about time we start to listen to the ambulance drivers and the paramedics rather than the unions who we know has got one single agenda and that's to get rid of us.